This is the story of a journey from repression to democracy. Abi Ahmed is offering hope to millions, but there are great risks on the way. Are you the man to unite Ethiopia? Of course I am. Can Africa's youngest leader overcome the immense challenges he faces of widespread ethnic violence? <laughs> This is the story of a leader racing to reform. At an airport in Ethiopia's Aromia region, they're waiting for a political sensation. These aren't the party hacks so often rounded up to praise powerful men. This is an embrace between one man's dynamism and a people's hope. I'm very happy, really. A former soldier, Abi has confounded expectations of how leaders are supposed to behave in this country. In less than a year, he's implemented a raft of reforms at a pace that's confounded supporters and opponents. Abi is a very, very driven man, a very ambitious man. He symbolizes the kind of ambition, the kind of courage to storm the heavens that youth would represent, but he also represents the kind of tendency to gloss over things, the kind of tendency to try to telescope decades into months, years. To and rush things, in other words. To words. rush things. Now, after decades of repression and censorship, it is at last possible to travel into the lives of Ethiopia's people. In this land of 100 million people, I'm on a journey to hear from those who were silenced for so long. Beginning here, at Zalambesa, on Ethiopia's border with Eritrea. And these, the abandoned trenches of one of Africa's worst conflicts. 70,000 were killed in the war with Eritrea. What began as a dispute over border territory saw neighbors and friends divided for 20 years behind the lines of opposing armies. Elsa Tesfaye was a teenager when war erupted in 1998. Now, in the atmosphere of openness, at last she can speak out about the conflict that killed her brother. What happened in the war to your family? Under a UN ceasefire deal, the war became a frozen conflict with occasional flare-ups. For 20 years, the border was a symbol of hardline politics on both sides, one of Africa's most intractable problems. Until the arrival of Abiy Ahmed. In an audacious move, he reached out to Eritrea, conceding territory. It was a gamble, a new leader acting against expectations. Abi was shrewd. By acting quickly, he outwitted hardliners on his own side. And by giving back territory, he presented the dictator of Eritrea, Isaias Afawarki, with an offer for peace he couldn't refuse. Most importantly, he had the overwhelming approval of his people, tired of the longest ever war between two African nations. 
I noticed that when you're speaking, and I mentioned the Prime Minister's name, you went like this, you held your hands up as if to heaven. Uh, what does that mean? The peacemaker, Abi Ahmed, learned the value of compromise early in life. He grew up here in the Aromia region, the child of a Muslim father and Christian mother, and was taught to respect different identities. His family say he was always a peacemaker. But it was an event during his army career that warned Abi Ahmed of the catastrophic danger of ethnic hatred. As a young UN peacekeeper, he served in Rwanda in the aftermath of genocide, when hundreds of thousands were killed after political leaders incited ethnic hatred. When he joined the ruling party back in Ethiopia, Abiy Ahmed cultivated friendships across ethnic groups. He's a very good orator and he's been, he's almost preached this message since he's come into office about uh, Ethiopianness, about uh, one people uh, in this country, uh, about trying to overcome ethnic differences in the country, uh, about working together for the good of Ethiopia. But to try and fully understand Abiy Ahmed and the nation he is trying to change, it's necessary to go back to the 1970s, to one of the darkest periods of the Cold War, and the regime whose atrocities first led the young Abiy into politics. Here in the capital, Addis Ababa, the Red Terror Martyrs Museum recalls the darkest years of modern Ethiopian history. Four years before Abiy was born, in 1972, a military coup brought to power the Marxist Derg regime. This place is a reminder of where Ethiopia has been and why Abiy Ahmed's promise of true freedom means so much. This country has suffered terribly in its history, where peace is guaranteed, and where you'll never go back to anything like this. Yes, I I mean, now I saw it eight months ago when the new prime minister came to me. I can speak everywhere else. I can write what I just mean. Previously, I didn't. These young people who have been lost. Museum guide Mulune Haile lost friends and family under the brutal dictatorship of Mengistu Haile Mariam. According to Amnesty International report, more than half a million Young people, Christian, Muslim, and discriminately slaughtered, and also my own brother, Ki. This is your brother here? Yes, he's my brother. What happened to him? After they arrested him, they tortured him. The only thing that we knew later on, he was killed without any due process of law. And there are so many families like yours. Yeah, four children in one night from one family. Three brothers were friends of me. Let me show you one of the mass graves. So this is a reconstructed? You no, know, uh, this is the place. That is the place we found this, from that place, it's in a single mass grave, we dug out 1,000 bodies. But there are people buried here? Yes, yes, you can get born inside it. I've never seen this in a museum. <laughs> yeah. The green rope that we see here, yeah. what's that? Yeah. That was used to strangle people? We are strangled. This is a tie. The stronger by specialists. So these aren't anonymous skulls. We see the, the photograph here of somebody who was. Yeah, we lost one generation, very young, dedicated, and they love their people. I never forget. We never forget. And our ultimate goal: all conflict surely must be solved through democratic discussion. Otherwise, the result will be like this one.
Abiy first entered politics through the revolution that overthrew the Derg. The victory of the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front was a huge moment for Ethiopians, ushering in widespread economic reform and hopes of real freedom. But Ethiopia remained a one-party state, autocratic. Uncle Abiy Ahmed arrived nine months ago and dramatically changed the rules, releasing thousands of political prisoners, freeing the press and inviting exiled dissidents to return. Among them, a former judge and opposition leader who once spent 18 months in jail, but was invited home by Abiy Ahmed to run the country's election commission. I'm a uh, former political prisoner, right? So I don't remember any year in which we didn't have any political prisoner, like notable, known a political prisoner behind bars. You have lived through false hope, false dawns. What makes you believe this time is different? Thousands, like if not millions of people for, paid for, you know, to see this kind of change in this country. To have like a former opposition leader, to uh, a former dissident uh, to lead, uh, you know, an institution with, uh, you know, significant uh, independence of action, you know, it means a lot. Of course, it needs a lot of collaboration to institutionalize democracy and to have meaningful election and free media all you know independent institutions but i'm i'm very hopeful uh, we'll do differently this time around abi Ahmed travels across ethiopia to rally support he's a devout pentecostal christian and can seem at times like a revivalist preacher of old a man with absolute belief in his mission of transformation these medical graduates in Oromia see a leader who has allocated half the cabinet posts to women, as well as the presidency and the role of chief justice. Among the students, Abi Ahmed was on home territory in his native region of Oromia. But a deadly grenade attack at one of his rallies last year was a reminder that not everyone embraces his reforms. This is Tigray in the north. Its people comprise just 6% of the population. But their party, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, TPLF, dominated the coalition government until Abiy Ahmed came to power. Now many prominent Tigrayans are among those accused of human rights abuses and corruption under the old regime and are feeling marginalised. Geta Tureda is a Tigrayan and former colleague of the Prime Minister. Our concern, this part of the country, is that uh, many people, uh, including some in the, in the corridors of power, want to blame everything that happened in this country uh, on, on TPLF and on the people of Tigray. Is it dangerous? Uh, dangerous and then some. Dangerous because every Dick and Harry and every street in Addis would blame their poverty, their lack of access to amenities on, uh, on another guy, a Tigrinya speaking guy, who undergoes the same kind of suffering, if not worse. And that, that, that's, not the, that's not the kind of thing that uh, holds people together. That's not the kind of thing that holds nations together, the entire nation together. Tigrayan people will need to be included within Abiy's vision for governance of Ethiopia. And I would say that he has shown that during visits to the Tigray region, uh, but there has also definitely been a, a sense from Tigrayan leaders that they, they are feeling a bit encircled. In rural Tigray, there's anxiety at the growing tensions. Abdi Hailu is a farmer who told me he fears traveling to other parts of the country because of his ethnicity. Bagger, you must zigginet, Ethiopia, zigginet, Scaling, the rest, Ethiopia, Zure, Monor and Dalabino. 
እኔ ከዚህ ወጥቼ ከትግራይ ወጥቼ ምን ወር አልችል ስለዚህ ግን የላይኞቹ ሰዎች ቢስተካከሉና በዲሞክራሲ መብት ቢመሩን ይሻል ነበር ያመሰግናል Do you believe that Prime Minister Abi is the man who can do that who can bring that change እቲ ኤርትራን ሰላም ያደረገ ማን ነው እሱ ነው ስለዚህ ዶክተር አብይን ይቀየራል ሰላም ያለውን ብጥብጥ ሰላም ያደረጋል ብየማ እምነት አለብኝ It is a very big ask ethnic division is by far the greatest challenge to Abi Ahmed Allowing the larger ethnic groups to rule their own regions hasn't helped to ease tensions. And the tensions aren't confined to Tigray. Ethiopia has more than 80 different ethnic groups. And violence between some has displaced nearly 3 million people. I travelled to Koloji camp in Jiga in the Somali region. More than 70,000 ethnic Somalis fled here following fighting between the Somali and Oromo ethnic groups. Wow. There's just so many people. Mm. I was shown around Koloji by Omar Ahmed who fled here with his family after his business was burned down. በጣም ይከብዳል አሁን ስራ ይሄለም እንትን የለም ገዘብ የለም ሽግር በጣም አለ ምስራን ነገር ምንም የለም አሁን በጣም ይከብደኛል ምስራ ነገር ጭቃጭቅ ነገር The violence isn't confined to this area In the first 9 months of last year more than 1.4 million Ethiopians were displaced So these are the people who've just come Ah this they they came last night This woman escaped but three of her grandchildren were killed. There are ethnic conflicts flaring across the country and for the government it's basically a question of putting out brush fires and hoping that there isn't a major explosion. Abiy Ahmed has already launched military action against Oromo separatists. But this is a leader who's promised to heal, not to harm. I think Abiy sees this uh, as the greatest threat to his administration. When you look at the numbers of people that have been displaced last year and the potential for in increased intercommunal violence, um, what Abi is trying to do is bring people together having this national unity he's reaching out to build a constituency base outside of ethnic uh, basis Abi Ahmed needs more than dynamism political skill and the support of the army it's about creating prosperity for the many out of one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Progress began with the policies of the last government. But Abiy Ahmed is promising much more, opening up state enterprises like telecoms and the national airline to foreign investment. Walking through this city, the sense of dynamism is extraordinary. It's a reminder that this whole process of reform isn't just about politics, it's also very much about economics. It's about creating an Ethiopia which is prosperous enough to ensure that different ethnic groups don't feel they're constantly competing for scarce resources. But Abiy Ahmed inherited a legacy of corruption and an economy that hasn't produced enough jobs for the young. The majority of Ethiopians are under 30, but an estimated 27% is unemployed. They scan the public job adverts in what for many is a frustrating search. ሲወጣ ደግሞ ለኤክስፒሪንስ ለሆነ ነው እንጂ ለዜሮ አመትን ታሰብ አድርጎ የሚወጣ የሥራ ቁጥር የለም For now these people back Abi Ahmed but there will be a price for that support Dr Abi እንግዲህ ለውጡ ስካውን ያደረገ ያለው ሐሳቦ እንግስቃሴ ጥሩ ነው ግን ዙሮ ዙሮ ለሥርዓት አንድ ቦታ ሰጥቶ አይቻው አይቻው አቅም ስካው አንድ ቀን ለሥርዓት ለወይም በአብዛኛው ለወጣቱ ኃይል ምንም የሰጠው ነገር የለም ቦታ ይላል ሰጠም እስካሁን የግል ካምፓኒዎችንም የሚቀጥ የሥራ ድል የሚፈጥሩ የገዢዎችንም ባላብቶችንም 
ለክ ለተማራቂ ተማሪዎች ብዛት ያለው የተማረ ወጣት እንዳለ ለነሱ ታሳቢ የሆነ ስራ የስራን እንዲፈጥሩ እነሱን ግዴታም ወይም ግዴታም ወይም በውዴታም እንዳደርጉ ማስደረግ አለበት The prime minister wants Ethiopians to drive change in their own lives and for some his revolution is encouraging a spirit of enterprise Betty Gatachu has set up her own business in the capital making greeting cards She could have emigrated to Canada but chose to stay in Abiy Ahmed's new Ethiopia There is a lot of opportunities coming along and not like the old age because it's open and um, exciting time many countries i go to if i said to a young person you've got a visa for canada they jump at it but you said no when it comes to education i could sense that me moving to canada will have a better um, impact on my life but being here right now means for me to expand the business and help my community like it helped me before Stability depends on Abi Ama delivering prosperity not just for those in the towns but for the majority of Ethiopians who still live in rural areas and the 22 million still living below the poverty line. Abi Ama acts as if nothing is impossible but as he races ahead it can feel as if the details of his revolution are still being worked out. At the end of a long day in his home region of Aromia I caught up with him again briefly. He is a consummate politician. There was a traditional kiss on the cheek for the visiting journalist. If you've one message for the international community, what is it, sir? Peace and love. And what can the international community do for Ethiopia? Oh, let them come and see us. We're enjoying peace, development, uh, and unity in this country. They can come and learn from us how to live together. And there will be no turning back on your reforms. Not at all. You're committed. No. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Abi Ahmed's revolution has seemed unstoppable so far, but the deep ethnic fault lines and the legacy of Ethiopia's autocratic history still have the potential to derail him. If he can create a truly accountable government, it will transform Ethiopia. but also embolden those across Africa who are struggling for democracy